Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to our service um, this bright and early, not Christmas morning, uh, as we celebrate Easter today. Although it's supposed to snow later, I hear. Uh, <laughs> I don't really have any announcements this morning, except that today we're just blessed and rejoice to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll follow our service as it is printed here in your service folder. Uh, yeah, so we'll just get started then. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We'll start by singing our first number 457, Jesus Christ is risen today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro today is taken from Exodus chapter 15. I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You will bring them in and plant them on your mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 65. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and, and, and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has, also, has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. We join us singing our next hymn, number 461, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
lips to God. Please rise for the gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. When they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, and as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told them these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to be to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, and he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home, marveling at what had happened. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. At this time, I invite the children to come forward for a message just for them. Right in, coming up, lots of room. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Tired? No? I'm tired. So today is Easter Sunday. It's a very, very important day. And one of the things that we're doing today is we're saying a word like all the time. And that word is Alleluia. We say Alleluia. Alleluia. We, we say it a lot. <laughs> you can't say it yet. That's okay. But do you know what it means? You know what it means? It means praise be to God. And so we're saying, saying praise to God today because today Jesus rose from the dead. So on Friday last week, we celebrated Jesus going to the cross and dying on the cross for our sins. And today, Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. And so we say, Alleluia. Say Alleluia again. Alleluia. Praise be to God. And so today we're going to keep saying Alleluia and keep giving God thanks because Jesus is risen from the dead and Jesus lives and he forgives all of our sins. And so what I want to do is I want to praise God. I want to pray to him right now and we'll say thanks for that. So let's do that now. Uh, you guys close your eyes. Hold your hands, bow your heads. And let's pray. The congregation will join you. Dear Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross and rising again from the dead. Alleluia. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming. You guys come back to your seats, and we'll continue by singing the next four verses of our hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who loves you with his very life. Amen. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where, like, the outcome is, is exactly not what you expected it to be? Like, maybe you're doing really, really well at something. It's all sunshine and rainbows. Things are going your way, but one event, just, just one little event changes absolutely everything. Does that happen to you? Maybe the opposite is also true, like things are not going your way, and then one little event somehow, some way changes everything, and everything works together and, and turns out better. Of course, this morning I am talking about the game Uno. You know this, this classic card game, right? Like you're sitting there playing this game with your family, with your friends, and it's just, you know, silly fun. Well, I mean, sometimes it gets pretty intense, I suppose. Um, if you've never played before, like the goal of the game is you match colors and numbers to, to try to get rid of all the cards in your hand. When you have one card left, you have to shout, Uno! And if somebody beats you to it, you have to draw another card. Now, when you're playing this game, some people fear the dreaded draw for wild card. That card is only there to, to cause problems. And I say this because they just made a new version of it that's just entirely draw for wild cards, just for those who like problems, I guess. But there's one card that personally I dislike the most, and that is the reverse card. Now there's this thing that ha takes place, this, this trend I've seen online where people will go to events and will hand somebody else a reverse card. Like if you're at school and someone's picking on you, you hand them the reverse card and now they're picking on themselves. Or if you're at a restaurant, you put it in instead of your credit card into the bill and now the waiter's stuck with the bill or whatever it is. Don't go do that one. But like, no, seriously, if you're sitting there playing this game with your siblings and you're counting out the number of steps that you have, the number of cards in your hand, how long it's going to take for you to win the game, you have one card left, you passed the UNO test, it's coming, victory is there, but suddenly your sister plays the reverse card and the other sister wins. It's just the worst, not that it's happened to me. <laughs> for me, though, it was, it was devastating losing the game to your little sister, but for her, the, the sheer joy of going from not winning, from just about to lose to her big brother, to victory, well, <laughs> that was a happy day. And so I, I can't imagine what it would have been like to be in Jerusalem during Holy Week and experiencing reverse card after reverse card after reverse card after reverse card being played out in the city and the lives of these, of these people. Holy Week starts out last Sunday with a very, very, very high note. You're sitting there, you're counting all the cards in your hands, you're going to win the game. It's Sunday, an absolutely beautiful day. A lot of wonderful things take place like Jesus tells his disciples, the time has come. The Messiah is going to enter into his city, into Jerusalem. And Jesus, in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy, he finds this little donkey and he rides it into Jerusalem. And everybody sees this coming and, and thousands and, and tens of thousands of people gather and they, they line the streets and they pack and they shout because Jesus is here. The Messiah has come. Victory is at hand. And St. John in his gospel tells us that people are excited because he's, he's the Messiah. He raised Lazarus from the dead, and everybody's excited to see, to see him there. Jesus enters through the city gates, and everyone is literally cheering his name. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The city is an uproar. The buildings are shaking because of how loud the people are. The Messiah, mighty in battle, strong to save has come to set his people free like Moses from old, time to get rid of the Romans. The crowd is, is so loud, the Pharisees think the Romans are going to catch wind of it and put an end to Jerusalem. But Jesus, the triumphant, defiant Messiah, says boldly, let the people rejoice. If you were to silence them, that the dirt itself would shout for joy because God is here. Everything's going your way, you're counting the cards, victory is at hand. And later that week, as Jesus and his disciples are preparing to celebrate the most important festival of the Jews, the Passover, remembering how God told you to, 
to take a lamb, to sacrifice it so death would pass over you and you would be set free from slavery. You celebrate it and it's great. And Jesus is talking about his kingdom and he says to his disciples, I'm promising each of you a throne to sit on. You're going to get to sit there on a throne in my eternal kingdom as one of my judges. But then a reverse card is played. Jesus, during that meal, says, but one of you, my closest 12, I know in advance, one of you is going to betray me. And from that moment, you see the cards go the other way, and things start to spiral out of control. Judas the Iscariot stands up and leaves the meal. Um, the rest of them finish the eating, and they go out to this, this beautiful garden to pray. And after hours of there in the cool mist of the darkness, praying there, Jesus is in a visible distress. And then a mob comes, like one of those things you'd see in a vampire movie with pitchforks and clubs, chasing down not a demon, but the Lord of life. And from there, things only get worse. What once was a sure victory of triumph of the Messiah coming in strong in battle and mighty to save is now one of sure defeat. After a couple of mockeries there in kangaroo courts, after painful hours of beatings, whippings, torture, and crucifixion, the Romans do what the Romans do. They kill Jesus. They kill people who pretend to be, clean, pretend to be kings. And just like that, put the cards back in the box, it's game over. Jesus is dead. Really, really dead. And some rich guy offers to bury him, and, and that's it. Everybody goes home. It's done. All hopes of Jesus that were there that Sunday when he came into town, the crowds, the shouting, his name, all the aspirations of, of overthrowing Rome, of, of, of freedom, died that day. The disciples, the, the 11, the women, the 72, all of them, their lives were absolutely crushed. They had been defeated more than just what my sister did to me those years ago. And, and Luke records this. This is what he says in the verse right before our text today. And so on the Sabbath day, they rested according to the commandment. Because in their eyes, nothing had changed. They were still under the Old Testament laws. They were still going back to how God used to always do things from Moses way back in Egypt. And it was time to pick up the pieces, time to just keep on keeping on, time to follow the old way. And so when the Sabbath day had ended, um, the women who had financially supported his ministry, as Luke records earlier in his gospel, they went to give him a, a proper burial, as was their custom. They would use spices, specifically myrrh, like what the wise men brought, to anoint Jesus' dead body, essentially to, to cover the smell from the hot desert sun. This was a tradition for very important people to honor them. So as you passed by the graves, you smelled nice things instead of, well, not so nice things. And so they come laden with their, with their jars, their packs, ready to do the sad but necessary work of, of burying a loved one. Because again, for them, it was game over. But God had another reverse card in his hand. The game wasn't quite over yet. They arrive and, and the tomb is open. The stone is rolled away. The guards, they're nowhere to be seen. And these women, they thought that they were done. And so they're, they're like super confused. Luke uses the word perplexed in our text. But that doesn't quite do it justice for the understatement. Flabbergasted would be another great word. They they're like, what's, what's going on here? They go inside to see what's up, and they're not met by, by anything they would expect. They see two angels, two angels in, in dazzling white, these, these, these beings that look like men. And the angels see their confused faces as they have no idea what's going on. And the angels are like, all right, let me spell it out with you. And I love this. Luke records the exact moment the reverse card is revealed to them. Listen to what the angels say. Why are you looking for living people among dead people? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? You don't go to a friend's house or to a grave to find a friend. You go to where they are. Christ is risen. 
He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A cemetery is for dead people. Why do you expect to find Jesus here? The reverse. Death has been reversed. It has been reversed in such a permanent way that the game is truly over just in the exact opposite direction. Jesus has won. He's not in the tomb. He is risen from the dead. And Luke captures that moment. You can picture it there in your mind's eye. Right at the entrance to the tomb as they're taking a look, staring in as these angels who are telling them things they just couldn't imagine, thinking that they have work to do for Jesus, the angel says, ha, you're too late. The work's already done. Jesus is risen from the dead. Remember the promise that he made to you? He said he was going to do this, and, and he did. And then Luke simply writes that the moment their faces change as they get it, the smiles brighten their faces. And Luke says, they remembered Jesus' words. He doesn't just mean that they, they remembered, oh yeah, he, he, he did say that. But they remembered, they, they realized, they believed. Their agenda from, from Friday and Saturday is completely gone. They abandon their thousands of dollars of spices. It's vanished like a fog burned up after the warm sunlight of the day. They just literally turn around like, forget this. I'm going to go tell people Jesus is alive. Like here are these women mourning, just absolutely beset with mourning, trying to, to comfort one another for this difficult task. Then they see the angels who say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And you see them get it. They, their whole persons change. The reverse takes effect from one of extreme mourning and sadness to one of extreme joy. Remember his words. Death to resurrection, despair to unending hope. And the reversal is so complete. Jesus' victory is so profound that it's still playing out today. Thousands of years later, it's still changing lives. And the way it works is, is not the way that we would expect. We would, we would like to see the cards, to see the hands played out in each of our own personal lives. But, but sometimes God has a different path in mind. The victory has been won. He holds the cards. But what we play out, well, we don't know. See, the women, they began to trust right away. But it took some time on that Easter for the apostles to be transformed. The apostles themselves, they didn't understand what was going on either. They thought the women were just beset with emotion or seeing things or hallucinating. Why did it take so long? I don't know. But I don't know why it takes so long for us today either. Why do, why do the promises of Jesus come to some people, but the power doesn't take as long as for other people? I don't know. No one else does either. All we can do is remember and speak the promise and trust in its power to transform, but the power of God to play a reverse in someone's life. And God did eventually transform the apostles, of course. Um, as you read the New Testament, um, we see the, the Easter people of Jesus, the people who saw him, who knew he was risen from the dead. They weren't perfect, but the power of Christ was there. The power of Jesus to forgive and restore to help people like Mary, to help people like Peter, and, and so many others. And that same power of Jesus, the power of his infinite reverse card, is here this morning too, because Jesus' power remains the same. All the evil that we experience in the world, Jesus took it and overcame it. Jesus died faithfully, carrying out God's plan to, to take evil and to use it for good. Raising from the dead, rising from the dead that first morning, Jesus broke the power of death and the power that sin has to accuse you and to separate you from God. Make no mistake, sin is evil and it separates people from God. But Jesus is alive and his power, his authority to forgive is a reverse against evil. He changes it and makes it for good. Mary Magdalene, Peter, you, me, the promise is for everyone, right here and right now. And I offer you this promise today and invite you to believe it once again and, and, and to trust it fully. 
The promise which reversed the women, turned them around, literally, like spiritually, literally, physically, turned them around. Once again, you and I can turn around from our plans, have our own reversal in our thinking that our lives are our own, and our need for Jesus isn't that great. Be restored. Be, be changed. And what happens when we do? What happens when we see the reversal in our lives? Well, some things for sure we know. Um, God forgives us. God will forgive you for Jesus' sake because Jesus rose from the dead. As far as east is from west, that's so far Jesus removes your sins from you. And we know God welcomes you no matter what your past, no matter what you've done. Peter fell as far away as you can fall, but Jesus reversed his course and claimed him and welcomed him. And God does the same thing for all of us through the power of that Easter promise. So what else is going to happen? Well, we see the lives of the disciples play out, but what else is going to happen in your life because of Easter? Well, to be honest, I don't know the whole answer to that question. You see, because of Easter, the game has changed, and all bets are off. If God can take all of the world's evil and use it for good, who knows what he's going to do? with the rest of us. I don't know what blessings or opportunities await for you in your life. But I do know this. Jesus is alive and he will be at work in your life. He will never stop working. He will be at work all the way until he comes back on that last day, the day of his glorious return, when we will once again shout, not Hosanna, but Alleluia, Christ has come. In his mighty power, he will raise you from the dead and he will give you a new life to a beautiful, a strong, everlasting life that doesn't end. Life with God, life with one another in a renewed world, the new heaven and the new earth. This is the power of the great reversal, the power of Easter, the power of God's promise because God made the promise and God means it for good. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, Please be seated for a song from our choir.
Please rise for prayer. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and so freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy upon us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name would be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil, whereby living we might live by your precious name. Lord, in your mercy, May your kingdom come and expand in us, O Lord. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by the faith, and the number of Christians might be increased. Lord, in your mercy, strengthen us by your Spirit, according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all of those for whom we pray those on their prayers of this congregation, and those who name before you in our hearts. Here are prayers for them and for all who are in need, praying for them at all times, that thy will would be done. Lord, in your mercy, give us this day our daily bread, O Lord. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all of our needs. Lord, in your mercy, Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, that our hearts would be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin would ever frighten us or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, and lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all of his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, and lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, when the women came to the tomb that first Easter morning, you sent angels to teach them your word, and you changed your lives forever. Be with us now as we celebrate Easter. Open our minds to understand the scriptures. Open our hearts to trust in Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. And open our lives to bear witnesses of your work in this world until your Son returns and brings his glorious kingdom which never ends. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our service continues, sing in our offertory on page 159. For those of you worshiping with us this morning, the Lord bless and preserve your coming and going in this time forward and forevermore. Amen. The rest of us.